Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Amanda Poss, and I'm the gallery director for Hillsborough Community College. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate the closing of our exhibition, Rooted, which is on view at Gallery 221 at HCC, Dale Mabry campus. I just want to mention a few things about our Zoom meeting before we get started with tonight's event. As you may have noticed, we are recording this meeting in Zoom. Simply subscribe to our YouTube channel at Gallery221HCC if you'd like to be the first to know when this is available. For clarity, you might have noticed that everyone except speakers tonight will be muted. However, we do welcome and encourage your participation just in the chat section instead. This is where we're going to look for your questions during our Q&A at the end of the event. So please, I highly encourage you, especially if there's any students in our audience tonight, to leave questions in the chat at any time and we'll get to it at the end. Now I'll tell you a little bit about our collective and this exhibition. Founded in the summer of 2020 amidst a national groundswell of calls for racial justice, New Roots Art Collective is a group of four Tampa-based artists committed to expanding African-American representation in the arts. In Rooted at Gallery 221 at HCC, artists Melvin Langston Halsey Jr., Indy Reese, Ron Simmons, and Brianna Walker share traditional, contemporary, aspirational, and reimagined visions of Black power. Through their work, the members of the New Roots Art Collective build on the legacy of previous generations of Black artists, acknowledging and honoring their cultural history while striving to create more space for African-American artists to be able to center their work in pride, joy, and free expression. Rooted was curated by Emiliano Sedacasi, a Tampa-based artist whose work is influenced by contemporary design, the iconography of branding, and advertising the Baroque. He studied at the Pratt Institute in the University of South Florida and earned his BFA from the latter in 2016. Um, Sedacasi is also a gallery assistant for HCC's art galleries and a member of Seminole Heights Artist Collective Quaid. Now I have a few words of thanks before I introduce our panelists. We're deeply grateful for the support of the HCC Dale Mabry Campus Student Government Association, whose generous funding makes our exhibitions and programs possible throughout the year. I wanna also express my personal thanks to the contributions of my HCC gallery team, of course, Emiliano Sedacasi, but also Michael Murphy, who helped to install the exhibition. We're also fortunate to have the support of Amy Bousquet, who's the Interim Dean for Associate of Arts, and Dr. Alan Witt, the retiring, sadly, um, HCC Dale Mabry Campus President, who's been a, a long-standing supporter of the arts. And now I'll turn this over to our curator of Rooted, Emiliano Sedicasi. Hello, everyone. Um... Can everybody see me? Um, thank you for that introduction, Amanda, and thank you all for being with us tonight. Uh, special thank you also to our exhibiting artists. Um, we're so excited uh, to have worked with you and to have your work in our exhibition uh, currently. Um, I'm gonna start off with a question for everyone. It's, uh, it's super simple, but I'm gonna put you all on the spot. Um, I'm just gonna go in in the order that I see you uh, in, in the stream on top here. Um, so uh, if each of you would please give me a, a brief introduction of who you are and, uh, and what you make. And the first person I see here is uh, Brianna. So Brianna, whenever you're ready, um, go for it. Hello, I'm Brianna Walker. Hey, um, I am an artist I've been painting for I want to say since 2013. Um, I am based out of Tampa, Florida, and the art that I create is, I don't want to call it pop art, but I do only because it's super colorful, i.e. But I create pieces that evoke emotion that derives from Black pride in a number of different colors, using a number of different colors that mean and represent different things for me and that I use 
to pull feeling out of the audience that is viewing my pieces that are displayed. Did I answer that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, I have uh, Ron. So, Ron, whenever you're ready, you can unmute yourself. Sure. Hey, all. My name is uh, Ron Simmons, uh, born and raised uh, Tampa uh, artist. Um, I create all types of work. Uh, my main concept now. I'm not sure if you want me to go in detail on that right now, Emiliano, but uh, currently create uh, this gas mask series, um, which is just created to evoke thought, uh, you know, any kind of concept topics that go on in society. Um, and I use all kind of mediums, spray, uh, acrylics, you name it, I try it out. And that's pretty much it. Awesome, thank you, Ron. Uh, next, I see uh, Reese. So Reese, whenever you're ready. I'm Andy Reese, hi. Um, I'm a self-taught artist from Tampa. Um, I'm a painter muralist, digital artist, um, in the realm of Afrofuturism. Very cool, thank you. Uh, and so that leaves Melvin. So Melvin, uh, whenever you're ready, you can unmute yourself and share your bio. Hey everyone, I'm Melvin. Um, I go by Langston, uh, which stands for live always, never go stress in the negativity. Um, I'm a digital artist. Uh, I also dabble with acrylic paint. I uh, recently got into mural work. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you very much. Um, so to, to preface my next question, um, which will stay uh, to everyone in the group, um, as you can see behind me, uh, this wonderful green screen image, um, we, we organized this exhibition so that when someone first enters the room, you can see that each piece uh, is by a different artist in the collective. Um, but then as you actually walk around the room, you're able to experience different sections devoted to each artist uh, in a way to, um, as you move along, discover all the similarities in, in the bodies of work that each artist creates, and then also discover the differences between each of the artists individually. And, and because of those differences, um, I'd like to ask uh, what brought each of you together to form uh, this New Roots Art Collective? I think, uh, I think Reese, we decided would go ahead and, and kick that question off. Um, pretty much what forms us, to, us together was our styles, honestly. Um, I've known Melvin for like a couple of years. I know Brianna for like five years. And I believe I met Ron about two years ago. Um, yeah, that's what I feel. <laughs> Melvin can answer the rest. Gotcha. And um, so as far as the collective, uh, Tony of Merge Culture and the Art Up organization um, was looking for individuals to put together a group or a committee of artists locally within the community to um, diversify the local art scene. And having worked with him before on previous exhibitions, um, both Reese and myself, um, he reached out for our input. So what we wanted to do is expand the African-American voice within the public and private art spaces and um, in the long run, create a new public workspace where African-American artists can be inspired and thrive. But um, since then, we've done numerous projects. We've done the Black Lives Matter mural off of East Cast and North Jefferson, um, the basketball court at Copeland Park. And then we did a mural at Just Elementary, just to name a few. But uh, it's it's been a journey so far. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thanks you for that uh, that background on you guys, and uh, we obviously think you're doing super admirable work. So um, we appreciate that that you've joined us uh, for this exhibition. Um, speaking of, uh, I, I like to always ask the question because um, I, I think it tells a lot and it gives a, a, a first impression of the artwork even if uh, you haven't seen the exhibition. Um, but I like to, to talk about the titles of exhibitions. Um, so can I uh, hear from, from any of you guys about the, the title for this exhibition, which is Rooted? Um, how did that come about? And, uh, and what, what does that say about uh, the work that we have? 
Um, yes. Sorry if I'm winded because I had to run and get my charger. But yes, um, we chose, well, first of all, we, Rooted was always going to be in the name. But at one point in the beginning, we wanted to come up with a theme. And because we do have a lot of similarities between our four different styles, but we also are very individualistic in our style. So we didn't want to try to force a theme on anyone or, or on any one of us that would feel like I, outside of what we normally do. So we ended up just choosing Rooted because each one of us is rooted in our own way of creativity, how we choose to show our creativity inside, excuse me, and put it outside to the world. And then, yeah. Um, so you see a lot of Afrofuturism within the full group. And you see a lot of different colors within a few group, within the full group. All of us love color and all of us think beyond what, what our present time is. We, we create pieces that we would like to see in real life in our future. And it's always pieces of us. Indy is very tribal. Uh, Melvin's very, he has the fashion and the technicality. And then Ron, his is very futuristic, but in a timeless way. You know, this could be something back in the 50s or it could be something 50 years from now, you know? And then I create pieces that just have the black identity, but I try to put in my pieces, like in the eyes, looking forward to the future. So yeah, that's how we came up with Rooted because we are rooted in the same. So my next series of questions are gonna be uh, individual um, based on uh, everyone's uh, particular um, style and the series of work that they have on display in the show. Uh, so I'm gonna begin with, uh, with Ron. Um, Ron, your work, as you mentioned, is most uh, identifiable by your trademark um, gas masks that you put on all the figures in your work. Um, I was also noticing that uh, the figures also have these, these joints that appear um, sort of action figure or doll-like as well. Um, and so I was hoping that you could uh, give us a little bit more context and tell us a little bit more about, uh, you know, what these motifs mean uh, to you and, and what you're trying to communicate with them in your work. Uh, yeah, can you guys hear me pretty well? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, the gas mask, um, that was a concept I started, I would say about maybe like five years ago, I always had the idea of doing uh, that. It, it started with me pretty much creating like a, a bunch of different masks and then evolving into the gas mask. Um, painting, I've been painting for about, I'd say like five, five years, I've been about painting. I've always drawn things, but about 10 years, 10, 12 years ago, I took a hiatus. Uh, I had my grandmother pass and she was always my inspiration for me creating. She always just let me draw on walls in her house and just do whatever. So she always allowed me to create stuff. And after she passed, I stopped painting for like 10 years, 10, 12 years. Uh, then my son was born and uh, that kind of inspired me to start creating again. Um, so, you know, when he was little, I would always like sketch stuff and like with the masks, I would just create these different masks. I'm not sure where it came from. Maybe I just started in a show or something, but I started creating masks. And it slowly evolved into evolved into the into the gas mask concept, but I didn't want to just have like gas masks because it's just so basic. Pretty much, you see that all the time. It's like, oh, you know, another weird gas mask thing. So I wanted to come up with the concept of using uh, the gas mask as, as a, a symbol outside of what we see. So um, you know, when you see the gas mask, it, it symbolizes, uh, I guess you could say, like. Um, oppression because in, in the photos and, and in the history we've always seen it with people going through things uh you know like you know uh, world wars you would see people wearing the gas mask kids wearing the gas mask because of they were filtering out poisons from the bombs and, and everything going on in society so i kind of flipped that and i want to use that to symbolize people wearing gas masks um to filter out impurities of society um because i just feel like we're pretty much have a concepts put on us early, especially children. I just feel like kids really kind of get thrown into a pit and, and what society expects them to be 
um, any kind of influences in society. You know, kids, for like example, now I just feel like kids are very influenced, they're easily influenced. So they'll see things on social media at a young age, things that they're seeing now that I didn't really see until I was 16, they're learning things at eight, nine years old. So that kind of takes away from their, their childhood. Um, so they wear this gas mask to symbol out the nonsense of what society places on them and what they're expected to be and things that they kind of should learn on their own growing up and shouldn't be influenced to absorb these things because um, it just takes away from their, their childhood. So they, they, they wear these gas masks and it, and it helps them evolve and grow as their own personality. Uh, so as they get older, you'll see like a lot of paintings that I had none in this in this situation, but you'll see a lot of the masks are off the adults because I feel like the adults are already who they want to be. And so the kids keep that mask on so they can evolve into who they want to be and not what society expects them to be. Um, so you'll see like this image here, uh, this kid here uh, on the right, um, he is looking through the binoculars because I just feel like he's looking towards uh, the future. And obviously with everything going on, you had a lot of protests and everything uh, happening over the past year or two. I mean, we've seen it plenty of times before, but these last two years have been pretty, pretty intense. So I wanted to put that symbol in there just to remember what's going on. So we don't, you know, get so blind to the point where we forget what happened. Cause there's just so much that happens back to back to back that sometimes we forget that very impactful things have happened to us uh, recently as far as society goes. Um, the one on the left out of the element, um, that kid there, I like to put the, the mask on there just to symbolize like the mask with the teeth because that's like kind of like a, I forgot the term, I can't think of it offhand, but uh, on airplanes, fighter planes, they would put that, the teeth on those planes, uh, just war planes pretty much. So I didn't want it to seem like an aggressive mannerism to kind of sway uh, the viewer from thinking that, you know, this kid is like, oh, he's vicious. I want to use that as another form of resilience. So that kind of adds on to the, to the aesthetic of the mask. Um, and with the tiger, uh, tiger is such a, a precious animal. So I wanted to incorporate that because I was watching a documentary just talking about like the tigers and how to put through the circus. And uh, I mean, these animals are so majestic and how they're forced to jump through these flames and do things they don't want to do. So that's where that title, the out of my element came from, because it's pretty much just puts you in a situation that you don't want to be in, um, but you're kind of forced to do things you don't want to do. So that, that's what that painting uh, um, is, is about. Okay, that one. Uh, yeah, that one I painted a couple months ago. Um, Frosted Nova came. So, so with that painting, it's kind of hard to break that down, but every day I feel like we wake up and um, we just have to keep, keep things going. Um, no matter how the day goes or how the day before was, uh, we kind of get up and we have to make things happen. No matter how you feel, no matter what's going on, there's always somebody going through something. So Novocaine obviously numbs us up. So I decided to you know, kind of incorporate that in children's cereal. So instead of the sugar, the sugar is Novocaine because we have to take that, that numbing kind of sensation and put it on ourselves to move about the day no matter how how things are you know what you're going on personally uh things of that nature so she's sitting in a dark room because i kind of wanted the, the dark hues because sometimes you just wake up in a, in a in a dark place but you have to keep moving and uh that's why i put the bowl a day keeps life's headaches away just uh kind of breaking down that kind of uh that concept of the painting so hopefully i didn't jabber too much <laughs> that, was great. that was great. I think, um, you know, I'm not sure that we ever talked about that. Um, you know, your your son is who sort of brought you back into making artwork. Uh, right. And I, I feel like your work is, yeah, there's, there's a lot of yeah. light going on. Uh, but um, I, I feel like, I feel like your work, honestly, is, is proof of how like thoughtful of a father you are because you know, it, it definitely shows, you know, your concern for future generations and, you know, the, 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 the perils of society and, and the ways that, you know, you're offering ways to sort of 
show how these children should be protected um, and fostered and, you know, uh, brought up safely. So um, really appreciate your work uh, and especially in this show. Um, Thank you. Next, I have a question for Melvin. Um, uh, Melvin, you take two very distinct approaches uh, in your work in this exhibition. Um, you have a couple pieces that feature, um, as you can see there, uh, you have a couple pieces that feature um, these figures in a more traditional style of African dress. Um, and then you have another series of work uh, that features figures wearing more contemporary street style um, fashion. Uh, so I was wondering, you know, in what ways do you see these two types of subjects relating to one another? Um, and then what, what unique things do you think uh, are better explored using one style uh, versus the other? Gotcha. Okay. So, I mean, at the root, they relate because it's the first time that I've incorporated men into my work for an exhibition. Uh, prior to that, I've always done women in some way, shape, or form. And uh, the figures dressed in the traditional African garments, I'm able to send a message with those that I can't send with the, the contemporary street style figures that I have. So where the one to the right here, um, the hands up don't shoot. I wanted to incorporate that in a tribal way because it's a message that can be understood on both ends uh, in different realities. Cause I feel like my works, you have these and then you have the other ones. They live in two different realities. Whereas one for me is based like here in America. And then there's these, those are more fantasy based. Um, so I can, I've like with those, I was able to channel my love for my culture, but I also was able to take a moment and dive into fashion and create the kente cloths and bring that to life. Cause that's something I've always enjoyed doing. Um, I just find myself mixing the two worlds because the more tribal art you can put those messages that looks natural like the, the paint looks natural. Whereas if I tried to do that with my other ones, it would it would come off putting or it just would be a decal on a sweater. Um, and then with the contemporary figures, they can carry a message that is more prevalent to right now for me. So at the time that I was making these, um, prostate cancer awareness was a big thing for me. So in the the pieces you have like the blue ribbon you have um there's like the ribbons are on the shoe and then there's on the sweater you have cure uh, don't cry and i saw that message and i had to put that in there just because as black men we're taught we're not supposed to cry no matter what we're dealing with and that's something that i personally deal with so it's rooted in me so i had to root that into my piece. Um, I, I'm big on channeling whatever it is that I'm going through into my works and sharing that message as best I can and hope it comes across. Um, but with like the balloons that you see in the background, that's the growing pressure um, surrounding the day-to-day -day process for me. Um, it's not always bad, but it's pressure in some form. And that's why it's surrounding those figures. And it's better for those figures than how I have the flowers blooming around the other figures. Um, those are coming from a place of, of peace. They're coming from a place of appreciation where that kind of artwork got me my start here locally to where I could even start exhibiting my work. So my mind state when I'm creating those, it's it's a happy place. It's always that. And um, that's why you, you'll see the gun 
there's a gun there, but blooming from the gun, you see the flower. And it's just showing that the peace, like the peace is there amidst the chaos. But it's, thank it's you. yeah, thank you. That was um <laughs> I I hadn't made that connection between the um you know the the hands as the um as the paint on the chest and also the connection to hands up, don't shoot. Um, but I think that's that's a beautiful um, connection there that you've made. And, um, okay. you know, we, we, we definitely, I can see um, where you have that, a lot of the figures do have this sort of solemn, uh, you know, these solemn expressions on, but, but there is positivity in, in all those as well. Um, you know, with the bright colors, uh, and then even with the the darker colors in the in the more contemporary styled um, figures, the the pressure of the balloons themselves are these like lighter, um, you know, pastel uh, these cheerful yeah. colors too. So um, you you work a lot with with those dichotomies. Um, so really nice there. Um, next, I have a question for Brianna. Um, in a previous panel that you participated in with us, um, you mentioned that you like using blue hues uh, in your work as a reference to blues music and rhythm and blues. Um, and you have a piece in this exhibition that's a, a portrait of singer Ari Lennox, um, as well as another piece uh, that's a portrait of Pam Greer, who is most famous for playing um, Foxy Brown. Um, so can you tell us more about your cultural influences and, and how those inform your artistic practice? Yes, um, my cultural influences, well, I would say my cultural influences started with my granddaddy, Elmo Allen Lane. Um, he was a poet, he painted, he did everything. And everything that he did, I eventually grew into doing without even realizing. Um, but it started there and just my family in general, my mom, my dad, uh, my granddaddy, uncles, aunties, sisters, cousins, brother, we all have different tastes in music and every single mu form of music, every single genre, but people have had their hand in creating. So um, with the things that I create, I love music. I love the blues, I love jazz. Those emotions that I get from the music, I put into my work. And naturally, I just like the color blue. I didn't realize until somebody had told me that everything I was buying was blue and my whole closet ended up being blue without me knowing. But I just naturally love the color blue. So when I started creating, I just loved how blue was just so smooth to work with. You have all these different hues that you can make with one blue you don't need a lot of different hues you don't have to buy you could literally just buy one blue and have a couple of the colors and then you know mix things up and make it so many different colors and the different blues or the different hues of blue to me represent the different hues in the black community you know we're not just one shade we come in so many different shades you have the darker, the, the medium, the light, however you want to see it. It's all black, but it's so many different variations and it's all beautiful. So with a piece of Ari Lennox, when she came out with that, well, I've been listening to Ari Lennox for years, first of all, I've been a fan, boom. But she, her music is very sensual in a sense when it comes to black femininity. And I love that because as a black woman, we are, it, it's just this persona of being strong and working through the struggles always just put on us, but we're not just that. We're soft, we like frilly things. We are not always fighting for something. Sometimes we're just enjoying life. Sometimes we're just having a good time. We're just normal people, but the music that she makes makes me feel like being a black woman is not just being strong, is not holding the weight for somebody else, is not holding the entire weight of a community, even though just I, in 
I just do that. I mean, we all just do that. But her music gives me an opportunity to feel my Black femininity and nothing beyond that that is restraining me from being the woman that I am. Um, so with this piece, I painted the skin blue. Um, when I look at, when you see the blue skin, it is living in a deeper moment of being black. It's not just experiencing anything on the surface, but when you see the brown skin, it's we're living in that moment as is. That is just living on the surface where we're at at that moment. And then when you see the sky, the sky represents freedom. So any part of the face, whether it be blue or brown, whatever color is in that space of the clouds, that is where they feel the freest. And I put the eyes as the blue part because I feel like when she creates her, mo her music, that is when she feels the freest because that's how I feel. So maybe it's an assumption or maybe it's not, but yes, that's how her music makes me feel. And that deeper feeling of black femininity is that's the one of the most freeing feelings that I can speak on. So that's what that piece represents. And um, I will start with the piece. Now, the one in the orange, I have renamed that piece probably 50 times. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the original name and it's called The Babies Are Watching. Um, with this piece, I, I use the Black Archives Instagram a lot for photos. A lot of people go there and they uh, submit their, uh, I guess, vintage photos of family members. Um, and it's nice to see because it's like you're looking at your grandfather, your grandmother, your great grandmother, things like that in very historical moments like Black Panther protests. And, you know, history recreated itself definitely in 2021 when it came to the protests that were taking place over, you know, Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so with that piece, it's called The Babies Are Watching because at that very moment, they are looking at what's happening in front of them as what it is. They're seeing everything as what it is on the surface, but through their the rest of their body, they're probably feeling something way stronger, a different type of pride, uh, a different sense of being just as babies. So they're seeing this in more than one way. And then um, my piece over to the right, that one was created just to, I wanted to, show what I saw in the beauty of being a Black woman and just Black women in general. Um, she's looking over her shoulder. She's bare. And her being bare represents just there's nothing that needs to be added to her for her to feel the beauty that she feels. And it is it goes in and out of melanin to blue, melanin to blue, because it's an array of feelings it's not there's nothing that's on the surface there's nothing that is on the inside that doesn't that can't form together all of it is I don't want to say a mix of emotions because that I feel like that means it's like confusing a, a confusing feeling but it's not it's just you feel the beauty from every corner and then that's the one that I use Pam Greer as my muse so that is from the movie Coffee must watch it that movie, after watching that and um, many of her other movies, Pam Greer is just that girl. She is that woman and she's not scared to play with y'all. So her is that one is named What Was Said. Because um, there's a lot of things that, that are said about being a Black woman. But no, for those who are not, it is not something that could be understood unless you're in the shoes and then if it's something that is questioned it's one thing to you know just ask questions but it's another thing to assume and a lot of times the assumptions are placed on our shoulders and yeah we do have to get defensive and I mean it is what it is but um the that piece is just it shows our natural instinct of being protective of who we are and the people we love That's so wonderful. I, um, I love how 
contemporary and, and you, you mentioned pop art in the in the intro um, and your work does feel very fresh and of the moment but I, I loved hearing about that it is rooted in you know your um, your upbringing and your family and and also um, like with the piece from from the black archive reference um, there is this element of history uh, with that piece and also the, the Pam Greer piece so um, you're making these these historical references and and this history very contemporary and bringing it into uh, into today and adding contemporaries like Ari Lennox into the mix as well. So um, thank you for that. Uh, next we have Reese, who fortunately we we lost Reese for a while due to the storm, but uh, but I believe he's back now. Um, yeah, I'm back. So I can ask uh, your question here. Um, in your work for this exhibition, you repeat this form uh, of an African mask. Specifically, um, you let us know that it was a, a reference of uh, Ghanaian masks. Um, mm -hmm. that you were at. Um, and with that repetition of the mask, um, we start to pick up on a few more subtle things like variations in color or pattern or texture um, in, in the masks and in the backgrounds that you use. Um, and so my question is, uh, what is the significance of that particular style of mask? Um, and you um, to, to center it and explore painting around it. Yeah, um, the mask is definitely Ghanaian. Um, I just love the way that it looks. It looks alien. Um, so I added my own style to it. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to represent the power and the strength and celebration of our ancestors. Um, much of my work has um, the, the my, much of my digital work has the saying our ancestors are watching. So I wanted to bring that in as well. Um, and with the textures and colors, they just come to me naturally. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, in that vein, you know, as we're looking around and, and mm -hmm. seeing the mask repeated, um, you know, not just with, with texture uh, and, and color and, and pattern, but um, it also leaves, leaves room to, to look at the titles of each more mm -hmm. uh, intentionally. Um, one of them being, it's on the screen now, the, the uh, more red and, and, pink um that one is flowers off for girls right um and you let us know that there is also <laughs> a haiku poem. yeah most of my pieces i've been inspired by my writings as well so when i write poems i try to manifest them into art um that piece has a poem and it's like so it's it's, it's simple it's a haiku actually um flowers are for girls pretty pink and delicate and so are the boys and basically it's saying that we can all be, we can all represent both duality of feminine and masculine. Yeah. That's beautiful. Can you, can Thank we get you. that one more time? <laughs> <laughs> what the poem, the yes, haiku? Um, flowers are for girls, pretty pink and delicate. And so are the boys. Wow, that's wonderful. Thank you, Reese. Uh, Thank you. So now I have a question, we'll bring it back uh, and open it up to the group. Um, you know, in the preparation for this exhibition, uh, you guys expressed that there's often an expectation of black artists to make work um, about trauma. Um, this, this discussion came up full disclosure because I, I actually wrote my, my early statement for this exhibition. Um, did have a lot of language uh, discussing some of the trauma that was experienced in the past year um, and historically. Um, and thankfully you guys reined me in and were like, actually we, we're not really interested in focusing on that so much. And uh, we, we want this really grounded in, in joy and, and free expression. So, so thank you for reining, in, reining me in. Um, but my question and uh, how I'd like to to discuss this further is, um, you know, how, how do you negotiate that pressure 
that you experience um, to make certain work versus, versus being true to you know your own vision. Um, and anybody can can start and answer that question. Well, I'll go ahead and say I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, like anything that I create, anything that I make, like my piece over here, this is not trauma based. This is based off of emotion. You know what I mean? She feels like she's breaking under pressure, but the tears create growth. In a sense, that's for everybody. That's not just for black people only. If she's black because I'm black and I love painting my people, but you know at this very moment in time and definitely in the past short not too too long ago but you know not too whatever movies everything on instagram shows tv shows music like everything is trauma based and in a sense or just in general it's like wait, imagine waking up every single day thinking about possibly being killed at the hands of police uh, brutality or you know feeling like you constantly have a target on your back how are you expected to enjoy life like that how are you expected to go on about your day-to-day -day life and function naturally or in a way that it's conducive to you being able to su support yourself and or a family or people that you care about that you have to help out you know so in being an artist I work you know, in a moment with what's going on, if that's how you feel and that's what you want to create, of course, put that on the canvas. But there are a lot of Black artists that for them, creating is an escape. We want to escape the things that plague us. And sometimes that is putting those emotions on to the canvas. It's putting what you're seeing onto a canvas to get it out of you, to purge that emotion, or it's harnessing the good emotions that are inside and creating pieces that are in a sense paradise for you an escape a vacation a mini vacation away from everything that's telling you to be afraid everything that's telling you to like close yourself up or run away and hide or be safe you know yeah be safe of course be precautious wherever you go with anybody it doesn't matter who but I refuse to live my life scared of anything. And I definitely have no plans on constantly. I created one piece that I felt to the core. I'm not living, I'm not gonna have my pieces, you know, evoke emotions of fear because I don't live in fear of anything. Well, that's my piece. Thank you. Did, did anyone else wanna, wanna jump in on that? and? Uh... And discuss that. Um, you know how how do you how do you negotiate that? Of um... yeah, I think Brianna said it well. Um, we just want to express joy. Um, our emotions. It's not always about trauma and fear and pain. I mean, if we put pain in our pictures, we can do that. But most of my stuff, as you can see, has like strength, and that's what we represent. Absolutely. Um, uh, that being said, um, another side of that question is, um, you know, there, there are a few fairly loaded themes in the show. Um, I know Ron's work, um, he has a piece that's discussing redlining. Um, we heard Melvin talking about uh, the use of guns in his work as well. Um, so, you know, I'm curious how, how each of you sees you, the responsibility of artists. Um, is there a responsibility of, you know, or should there be a responsibility? Um, and any of you can chime in. Yeah, um, I mean, it, there can be a sense of responsibility. It's totally up to the person creating if they want to do that. Um, I feel like it's the same concept with like musicians and stuff. I mean, you look at musicians and you want them to speak for uh, groups of people and, you know, some people don't want to do that, which I totally understand. You can't expect people to speak for others, you know, if they don't feel comfortable doing so. Um, my, my concept, especially like with that red lining painting, I'm not sure if that one, do you happen to have that one by chance, Amanda? Um, that redlining one, I just wanted to bring that up because I've been looking a lot of like real estate 
and stuff like that. You know, that's a, a big thing that we lack, especially in our culture. Uh, real estate is, is something that we typically don't have. Um, so I've been studying a lot about it, trying to learn more about it. And um, historically, redlining has always been an issue um, in America, especially. Uh, redlining, just briefly, I don't want to you know, go too deep on it. You know, I'm still learning about it myself. But redlining is like a group of people are pretty much banned um, from being allowed in certain places and locations. So um, like historically, like especially like when desegregation was taking place, a lot of black folk wanted to move out of where they currently were and go into different neighborhoods. And you had people that would stop them from going into those neighborhoods because they felt like it stopped them from it like devalued their property. So they would stop black folk from coming to their neighborhood by creating contracts or different stipulations that didn't allow them to move into those houses. Um, and it then and it and it kept going into the school system and to grocery store, even like grocery stores, like that even happens today. Like if you go to certain grocery stores or Walmart, you will see products in these stores, whether or not the price is just out of control or you know, the, the quality of the food is not there or it's close to expiration dates, but you go a few miles up the street or across the railroad tracks, you'll see better food, better prices, you know, just more availability and affordability for certain classes of people. Um, so I wanted to keep that going because that's just a thing that's really not talked about today, even though it's not as blatant as it, as it was back then, but it's still kind of going on now. So to sum up, I, personally like to speak on situations I don't particularly want to be a, a, a like a um, an advocate not an advocate but I guess somebody that that um, an activist you would say is not I don't want to put myself out there too much but I like to speak about it in the work just to keep the conversation going and, and bring awareness to everything that's still happening today or in the past or present hopefully that sums up the question I think it does and um there is a there's a, you know, a short question in the chat. I just noticed that's specifically about this, um, about this question. Um, Avril Stenson asks, uh, responsibility or reality? Um, and so, I, I mean, I think definitely in your work, Ron, you are discussing a reality. Um, and then in other works, you know, you're discussing reality in a hyperbolic sense you know i'm thinking about the one with the with the asteroid but but there is a lot of reality in those as well um, so thank you for those works um i think we can move to a, a q a we can open it up um there's been a lot of great comments in the chat but um we do have a question now so amanda if you would like to read the read the questions yeah, and again, just I think what everyone in the audience is emphasizing how um, much they appreciate all of your your comments and your honesty and sharing from your work. Um, talking about how beautiful and wild, uh, for instance, Indy Reese's pieces are. We and and I'll just take the the opportunity. Anyone else in the audience? Great time to throw your questions into the chat um, as we address our our second one. Really, uh, Babs Rangold asks. Each artist is using the mask in their work. Each uses it in a different way. Was there a conscious plan to focus on artists using the mask? And do any of the artists see this as a way to cover up something or keep something hidden? Um, for me, um, conscious part, um, I don't think it was conscious of us to use the mask. We all just use the mask in our own way. I mean, I used mask all the time. Um, and as to the second part of the question, um, for me, I don't want to represent something hidden. And most of the masks I paint, like the Ghanaian masks, are represented for power and celebration. Um, so yeah, nothing is hidden or hiding something. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, after I started painting in this style, I watched The Watchmen on HBO with uh, Regina King. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But um, yeah, I started seeing that resemblance and it is kind of like a mask when you really think about it. But 
for me, it's like taking the mask off. It's mask off time. You know, it's showing those real emotions underneath what is physically seen. So when you take the mask off, it's really like you're, you're experiencing something beyond the surface. So yeah. Um, but on uh, no, no, you know, I had nothing. Anyone else want to jump in about the mass before we move on to our next question? Um, okay, another question comes from J.A. Jones asking about what mediums you are all using. So specifically, what kinds of paint, for instance? Oh. Okay. For you too, Melvin. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, so for three of mine, I use um, for Be Free, Let It Go, Let It Fly, and Adolescent Freedom. Those were all done on um, my iPad Pro and transferred to Canvas. And then uh, the other two, it's a combination of um, a Canvas transfer and acrylic paint. Um, I've just been trying to dabble more with acrylic. I'm not as confident painting traditionally as I am digitally. So I use what I can to mediate those two. Um, my, for my pieces, I use mostly acrylic. I use pastels um, and the big one, protected and rooted. It has um, stained tea in the background. So I use tea on the canvas to give like a old wash to look. Um, I use acrylic paint, preferably for Walmart. <laughs> You know, not too fancy, but I use acrylic paint. This I got from Michaels. It's a hot mess. Hi. Um, but I like to use gloss and matte paint. Matte is easier to blend. And I do mix it with the gloss paint, but with gloss paint, it's harder to blend because once that thing dries, that's it pretty much. But yeah, I just use acrylic paint and tape. Yeah, um, on mines, I use a, a lot of uh, spray, um, acrylics, uh, oil paint, uh, graphite, and um, markers just to like hit the line sometimes. But yeah, I use a, a mix of medium of a lot on canvas. I saw the question. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, you mentioned that it was in the chat. Um, uh, Jay Jones asked if, if you're painting on canvas, paper, wood, what? So many of you are on canvas. For yeah, canvas. yeah, I'm only on canvas. Yeah, canvas. Preferred medium. And then another follow up from Jay Jones about medium was um, I think for you, Melvin, about uh -huh. what is the process for transferring from digital to canvas? Is it complicated? Oh no, so it's um, there, I go to Blick in Tampa off of West Shore in their design center. And they, um, they're able to take my digital files and transfer it to the canvas. They do that process for me. Um, it's a lot easier that way. And it's, uh, that way it's archival. That's the words art historians like to hear. <laughs> um, there are no more questions in the chat, but I know we had another one prepared. I think this is a great one to end with. Um, oh, actually, the one just came in from Melissa Stanhart. So we're going to go to that first. It says, Langston, my immediate response to your contemporary pieces was that the balloons have an intestinal quality. The imagery speaks to the point of what we digest, like black men are not supposed to cry, blockage, and what we need to expel to experience relief. The expulsion has an orgasmic component and adds a layer of emotional complexity and frankly joy. When I juxtapose 
that theme with the sensual blues. I focus on Brianna's pieces. I view so many of the pieces in this collection as cathartic. To that end, and this is for all the artists, what is or what was your greatest release or relief in the process of creating this collection of work? Great question. Thanks. Amazing question. That was um, for me, honestly. Um, my backgrounds are my favorite thing to do. Like all the textures, colors is my favorite thing to do. So for me, that was the greatest release to like focus on those first. Um, mine was getting the lines. Like them lines is not easy, y'all. When I tell you when they, the one piece of tape goes the wrong way, it's hard to get it to go the right way. So it's just getting the lines for the clouds and um, the breakage between the clouds and just the flat color background. I love color blocking. And when that color block comes out perfect and those lines are just, you know, symmetrical and straight, I am satisfied. That's my favorite part. Mine would have to be when I finish the initial the initial sketch of the idea, that's always the hardest part for me. Like the painting, that part is always fluid, but I got to go through the line art to get to that part. So once I finish the lines, it's smooth sailing from there. I feel at ease. Yeah, with me, uh, mine is as an artist, I just judge myself very tough. So when I have a piece that I finish and I like it and I don't want to stomp on it and throw it out a window, <laughs> then I'm okay with that. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, so I'll go back to then my, my last question, we'll squeeze that in here at the end. Um, what is next for you guys? I think you've cultivated a few fans from tonight, so I'm sure they're to hear what you guys are up to. Um, that's, that's the discussion that we will have soon. Um, but honestly, I would like to see us do something with the communities, um, put some more art in places that normally don't have art. That's my goal. Yeah, that is the goal that we talked about from the beginning. And um, we've made some major milestones as a collective in general, individually as well. Um, and then just coupled up together, grouped together. So we have completed some great things. And now I think this is the time and the chance to really get with the community and do something amazing. Agreed. Well, with that, um, as the reception draws to a close, uh, I want to remind our audience that the, the show will be open until July 1st. Uh, to come see it for yourself, simply book an appointment on our website. That's hccfl.edu slash gallery 221. Uh, and with that, our, official, our reception officially comes to a close. Uh, my thanks to all the speakers tonight, all of our artists. Uh, take care and be well. Thank you. Same thing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. You guys, appreciate ooh, it. Ooh, ooh, ooh.